C'est bon Yep. So, uh, last course on, uh, on I, I want to show you the formula for uh, the spike Wigner model. So uh, the model is written here. Uh, and what I'd like to compute is this uh, minimum mean square error and compare it to, uh, for example, the, what I'm calling uh, naive PCA here. <clears throat> so uh, as uh, should be now clear, this uh, minimum uh, is achieved by uh, the posterior mean of the product Xi, Xg given uh, the observation. So you see here, I, uh, I wrote the posterior distribution, uh, knowing uh, why. And so this is uh, the nothing fancy here, the corresponding Hamiltonian uh, in, in this case, which has exactly the same structure as before. But now I have a product of uh, Xi, Xg. So this is a posterior distribution just to define the normalizing function uh, Z, which is a, a function of uh, Lambda. And uh, here is uh, the free energy. And okay, now I guess uh, the strategy is uh, relatively clear. It's like uh, the toy model uh, we show you. You need to compute uh, a limit for this. And then everything will, uh, will, will follow from uh, this uh, explicit computation. So I will not uh, give any uh, insight on the proof of uh, how you prove uh, this. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, the part that is, uh, I think, uh, well written in the paper. Uh, but I will give the solution. So I shall probably erase, uh, let's erase this. So you need to keep in mind uh, this formula in order to compare to the minimum mean square error. So I'll define a function of two uh, parameter lambda, which is my lambda, and q, which will be the overlap. <coughs> so uh, first function, Okay, it's psi p naught of lambda. Okay, so uh, this function is a little bit complicated. This is still an expectation. So what is random here is a z on the x uh, here. You are in the, but they are scalar now. Uh, z is, uh, as you can guess, a Gaussian random variable. X is a random sample uh, given uh, according to this distribution p naught, and you are integrated with respect to the small x. Okay, so. <coughs> Can you uh, interpret uh, this formula now? But, so this is the uh, expectation of a log. So uh, expectation of a log, uh, it should be like on the <coughs> of a sum. Okay, so this is uh, the free energy for a very simple model. Uh, the model, the scalar uh, channel. With additive noise, where you have a prior uh, p naught on uh, on uh, on x. Okay, so this is uh, <coughs> the corresponding uh, free energy of this. Uh, so this free energy 
of Okay, and now is the theorem. For all lambda, sorry, Fn of lambda is converging to the super of Q of F lambda Q. Okay, so this, uh, this is it. Uh, <coughs> you, you have the, the formula for this, so now you can uh, run all the machinery uh, uh, I gave you. Uh, in particular, uh, <coughs> people doing inference don't care really about free energy, they care more about uh, information theoretical uh, results, so like uh, mutual information, so you have directly that one over n Uh, tends to. This is a, a direct application of what we saw before. Okay, because uh, we related uh, this quantity to the information, uh, mutual information. Okay, and now uh, you know that uh, you can apply the IMMSC theorem. So if you take the derivative of this, you obtain the MMSC, which is uh, what we are aiming for. So let's do this. So in order to do this, if you really want to be You need, I mean, to take derivative, you need in mass, you need to check that uh, your function uh, is differentiable. So this is a function <coughs> as a unique uh, max Q uh, star of lambda. So I'm looking at uh, a domain in in uh, uh, the positive uh, number, where this function as a function of Q as a unique, so where the, the supremum here is uh, achieved only at, uh, at Q star. So you have a property D minus a countable set. So basically, uh, this, uh, you are covering uh, most of uh, what you want. The function <coughs> is differentiable on D. Uh, and you have <coughs> An explicit formula for the derivative. Yes, yes, that's uh, that. So that's following the from a property we we saw, non-increasing convex. So you you cannot be very bad. So now you have, you 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 apply the I MMSC <coughs> theorem, and you get uh, so for lambda belonging to D, but. And I mean, uh, this is a, a direct consequence of uh, what we saw uh, before. Okay. So I think uh, you have uh, a self-contained uh, blackboard where everything is written, the model on the right, uh, <coughs> what is written to write the solution and uh, the limit for the MMSC, at, at least. Sorry, uh... Yes. Here you move the Q as an ancilla to uh, make supremum of uh, F or not. Q plays plays uh, the rule of an ancilla to help you. What do you mean by? Yes, yes. So, I mean, so this is a function of uh, two parameter lambda and Q. If you want, lambda is a is a signal to noise ratio. So this is this lambda of yes. the model. So it's fixed for a given model. 
and uh, you need to optimize this function as a function of q. So generally, q played at, uh, the q is, uh, is it's the same as what we saw this morning, actually. This is uh, uh, the, the intuition. So this is why I'm calling it q. The, the, you remember uh, the matrix with uh, one on the diagonal on q. So, so this is exact, the, this is the same uh, parameter. But you, you don't need to have this interpretation in mind if I mean, it's the only thing you care is the MMSC. Uh, you need to compute this function for a given lambda. You need to uh, to uh, <coughs> to maximize it. And uh, okay, so uh, in uh, in in my first course uh, when I speak about the semi-supervised learning, uh, I had a variational form also for uh, the, the, so I did an explicit computation of this uh, function f in, in another model. Uh, and uh, you were supposed, I mean, uh, to, to get the MMSC, you, you were supposed to maximize this function as a function of the parameter. Uh, the, and in my on waving uh, arguments, there were two Q, one because I was dealing with. Uh, uh, non-symmetric case, so there was a Q for the U and a Q for the V, satisfying a, a, a fixed point equation. And basically, the fixed point equation is uh, you are taking the derivative of this to ensure that uh, you attain the maximum. And you, you can do this here uh, too, if you, if you prefer to define a Q as a, thing, as a solution to the fixed point equation. Any other uh, question? So uh, let's. So now I will. Uh, I will only uh, interpret, give interpretation of this result in in particular cases, and see. Uh, uh, okay. So. Uh, but all the hard part in mass rely now on that I did not show you is uh, showing uh, this the limit of the free energy. So I'm referring to the paper for this. Uh, now I, I just want to rewrite in different way uh, the, the same result. Uh, so I want to compare this to uh, first the dummy part. So if you remember. Uh, this this one minus this quantity was a mean square error of the dummy estimator. So the one where you are not looking at the data. So you can reinterpret this result as when lambda is bigger than lambda c, then the limit of the When lambda is smaller, so this is a, you have a lot of noise. So here, this is a, a regime where you have no signal. Basically, you are not able to do anything better than uh, uh, providing as an estimator the mean of your signal, which is known, uh, though you don't. Which is uh, again, we are in the base optimal uh, regime. So, this is known to the statistician. So, there is no information in the data. And here, you can do strictly better uh, than this. So, looking at the data uh, gives you uh, a better uh, mean square error. So, <coughs> now there is one. Uh, okay. The, if you want to do comparison, you need to compute this. Uh, there is one particular case uh, where uh, everything is easy when you are taking. As prior, a Gaussian random variable for x. Uh, in this case, you have an explicit formula for uh, the function psi, uh, which is this one. And you, you plug it in uh, the f and so on. You do uh, the mass, and you see that q star of lambda is equal to max of zero and one minus one over lambda. 
meaning that the minimum mean square error as a function of lambda is converging to one if lambda is less than one and to one over lambda two minus one over lambda if lambda is bigger than one. Okay, and here what you recover is exactly uh, the mean square error of the PCA. Okay, this is so the meaning uh, of this is that uh, in this particular case, uh, PCA is optimal because you are achieving uh, the, the, the mean square error. So now uh, let's see. Uh, uh, and again, my results are uh, for the best possible uh, algorithm. So let's see if you if we can find an example where PC is not optimal. Uh, so I will consider uh, the case where. Uh, I have two Dirac measures. So this might be weird with a positive value and a negative value, um, depending on one parameter P. And I'm choosing it like that so that I get zero mean on unit variance. Okay, so this is a a distribution with zero mean unit variance uh, with a two uh, uh, with support only on two points. So if p is equal to uh, one half, this is just plus or minus one with priority one half. Okay. So in this case, you can do the mass, and you will have a picture like that. As a function of lambda, I'm plotting the <coughs> mean square error. So one is uh, when you are not able to do anything. There is a threshold here. So you can show actually this like that. This is a minimum mean square error. And okay, since I have color, I will do it. The PCA is, uh, is here. So this is a setting where uh, uh, the PCA uh, starts to detect signal as soon as it's possible, okay, at one. But still, uh, the performance of PCA is suboptimal sub in terms of uh, mean square error. Uh, now, if you take uh, <coughs> P equals to uh, 0 0.05, for example, you, you have a different picture, which is like that. So again, lambda <coughs> 1, so you still have. One, so this is the performance of PCA, like this. And there exists, you can compute a lambda C such that here it jump and, and start to decrease. So this is a setting where actually the, there is a, a phase where uh, you, you, uh, you have signal, PCA is failing. So it's just uh, <coughs> Not, not detecting it. And uh, um, okay, there is a, an algorithm that I did not describe, which is related to, uh, to the analysis done here, which is called uh, approximate message passing. And uh, approximate message passing is doing something like, so it's not better than, uh, than PCA uh, in, in this range, but then it, the performance is increasing uh, over there. So I have 10 minutes, perhaps. Uh, <clears throat> there is something I, I forgot to say here. I should uh, write. Uh, there is another theorem uh, saying that uh, how to write it? One over n x transpose x. This 
square minus q star square uh, in L2, this goes to zero. So you remember uh, the end that I made on uh, the scalar product, uh, the norm being equal to uh, Q square. So this is what we are able to prove, which implies uh, the assumption I made uh, this morning to, uh, to derive uh, <coughs> Uh, the, the connection with uh, the matrix of overlaps. So uh, we are fine uh, in terms of. No, in distribution. So, okay. so this is then it's okay. Yeah. Okay, the last five minutes. Uh, since uh, I promised to speak about graphs, uh, I will give uh, uh, one application to, a, to the committee detection for the stochastic, the infamous stochastic block model. Uh, and I mean, it's also related to a question I had, uh, if uh, things are working only with Gaussian noise, so clearly uh, when you have this uh, edges on, on nodes, uh, you, you are not dealing uh, with, uh, with a Gaussian random variable. And we see that actually this is, uh, so there is some work to do, but uh, you can apply this technique using a central limit theorem. So, the model is uh, the one uh, you saw with Laurent. So you have a graph on uh, n vertices. I will take only two communities to make life simpler. Uh, so the community is encoded in the vector xi. You put an edge with probability m it's I, it's G, <coughs> where the matrix is uh, scaled like that, uh, symmetric, uh, where A, B, and C uh, are a fixed parameter that does not depend on N, N will turn to infinity. Uh, okay, so P is basically uh, the fraction of node in the community one, one minus P is the fraction of node in community two. Uh, in the regime I, I'm looking at, D is the average degree uh, in my, uh, in my uh, graph because I'm making the assumption that everybody, I mean, it's a balanced uh, graph. I have this constraint relating uh, A, B, C, and P. So that this ensures that uh, D is the average degree in J. And it, the, your degree does not reflect the community in which you, you belong to. Okay, this is a kind of a symmetric. Uh, <coughs> okay, so now uh, if I'm defining Xi, I'm doing a, a small change of uh, my own, the, the signal I want to recover is the xi, whether I'm in community one or community two. And with this mapping, minus square root of p by one minus p, uh, <coughs> I see that if I'm looking at the adjacency matrix of my graph, Gig, so this is a symmetric matrix. On the entry are Bernoulli with parameter d over n plus d. I forgot to define epsilon is y minus b, I think. So this is a really rewriting the same thing. So uh, each entry is a Bernoulli random variable with uh, this parameter. 
Okay. So you see that the parameter depend on the on the signal thanks to this function. And you see that uh, this phi p. So what is the law of uh, x tilde? It's exactly uh, this this law. Okay. So the, the variance of this guy, when you take epsilon going to zero, the, the, when b is closer to one, <coughs> the variance of this is approximately d divided by n. Okay. You can ignore this. And <coughs> so if you define uh, uh, so, so now uh, what I'd like to, to do is, uh, okay, I have, uh, so these are zero, one, uh, and three. I want to, uh, to approximate this with a Gaussian. So uh, what I will do is uh, very crude. I will uh, match the moment, first or second moment, and see uh, how it goes. And if you do that, you have that KG is D over N, so the mean plus so this is why I needed to compute the variance. So um, here uh, you start to see uh, something uh, which is very similar to the spike Wigner model, except that uh, there is a, a constant everywhere. So what you, but, so this is the average degree. So even from a statistical point of view, if you are giving me a huge graph, uh, you will. Uh, it's very easy to compute the, uh, the a good estimate of the parameter d. So this will be the average degree in your, in, in your graph. So what you can consider is. <coughs> I should not call it, uh, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, it's consistent. So I'm rescaling the entry of my, so this is a modification of my adjacency matrix where uh, I'm removing the, <coughs> the average of, uh, from everywhere and I'm rescaling it. And uh, with this notation, you have epsilon square, if I, Okay, which is exactly uh, a spike linear. So here, uh, you, I mean, you need to, uh, here there is uh, something which is uh, not clear. So you need to show that this approximation actually uh, is correct if you want to compute, uh, I don't know, uh, the minimum mean square error or whatever you want to compute for the original model where you have only zero and ones. Uh, but it's not very difficult. The part which is more tricky actually is that uh, in such an application, you really don't care about the mean square error. Uh, what you want is uh, to know whether uh, a given node belongs to committee one or two. You don't want to make a small mistake on, on, on everybody. So the, the notion of performance of your algorithm uh, is uh, what people call the, the overlap of the, in the committee, which is, it's not the overlap in statistical physics, but it's a number of people you are classifying uh, in, the, uh, in the right uh, cluster. And here you need to, to work a little bit more uh, to, because uh, all the, my machinery is working very well for the mean square error. Uh, but as soon as you change the measure of performance, uh, you, <coughs> the, the posterior mean is not uh, the optimal uh, estimator. But since you have a good handle on the posterior distribution itself, you can uh, get a result on the on what people call the, the, the overlap in terms of community in this case. And if I'm redrawing basically the same uh, plot as here, but in uh, now as a, a function of p, so this is uh, the plot for this distribution in the spike Wigner as a, a function of p. And here, this is uh, lambda. 
So you have one over here. You have a line like this. So this is a symmetric stochastic block model where you have two community of the same size. <coughs> so this is called what uh, Laurent calls the Kesten Stigum uh, bond, where here it's easy in the sense that uh, PCA is working. Uh, so, okay, here, since we are not interested in minimum mean square error, uh, uh, what I mean by uh, working is uh, doing better than random guessing. So, you are detecting some signal. And there is a value, P star, which is which has an explicit form, uh, value. And then here you can show that it's impossible. Uh, <coughs> so we know that below this line, uh, PCI is not detecting signal. Uh, indeed, in all this regime, uh, no algorithm will be able to detect signal. So it's impossible to do better than random guessing. And here, since we didn't find a, an algorithm, so we know this, that it's possible because uh, in square error, I mean, you are detecting signal, but we don't know of any algorithm working. So we call this, uh, this phase a hard phase. And I think I will end up uh, my lectures here. So it was a great honor to be invited in such uh, a nice location. Uh, to, to give the, this course. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And all the missing details are in a paper with uh, uh, Leo Miolan uh, that appear uh, to fundamental limits of symmetric low rank matrix estimation. So uh, in particular, if you want to see the proof that the free energy is converging to the formula I gave you. So thank you for your attention. And I don't know if you have questions. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions that you may have? We have a bit of time actually because the next lecturer is not here uh, as he okay. promised. I, I was too fast. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Ah, yes. Thank you for the course. Okay. Yes. I have a question then. Um, here, uh, so in this case, um, PCA is optimal in this uh, spherical vector case. Do you know uh, other cases where uh, PCA is optimal? Is well, it's, I mean, it depends uh, what you mean by optimal. It's detecting signal as soon as it's possible. Yeah, I mean both. Like, I mean, first uh, cases where the transition is still the same. So I think this uh, happens in many cases. The like this one? Yes. Then when the curves, the MM, uh, PCA is MMSE optimal. Uh, so your question is for what prior? Yeah. Do you is have... MMSE? So what we saw is that, uh, so we saw that for Gaussian, the Gaussian prior, yes. which basically corresponds to the case where you have the least information possible, yeah. uh, then PC is. Uh, so I guess your question is, is it the only prior for which uh, PC is or, optimal? Or can you think about some criterion that would say that's the uh, case or not? That's a good question. Can you I guess don't... in advance if PC is optimal? In advance? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know the answer to, to this uh, without doing the math of Computing, yeah. uh, it's quite natural that I mean the the Gaussian uh, prior is the one for which PCA should be uh, not too bad because basically there is no information in the prior. Yeah, and as soon as you are putting information in the prior, then PCA is not using it. So, I agree. Uh, so so then let me rephrase my question. Do you know if it has been formalized this uh, this uh, Natural, no, uh, uh, this natural guess that uh, when no information is present in the in the uh, signal, then PCA should be optimal. I don't, uh, I don't know. Yeah. 
the um, Gaussian distribution, I mean, for fixed mean and variance, you fix zero, and, uh, zero mean and, and unit variance. Then it, I think it is the unique distribution that maximizes the entropy on yes. the real line. So that is the distribution that contains the least information. This is imagine. why I'm seeing, yeah, this is why I'm seeing this, yes. it, it contains the least information. Yeah, but, but I don't know if there is a... But it does not imply that uh, this will be the only case in which PCA will be optimal. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I see. So this, I don't know. Let's say, okay. Let's say that now the, the noise is not Gaussian and uh, the, the, the prior is still Gaussian. No idea. Uh, I don't know. I mean, okay. Okay. This case, uh, the noise is not Gaussian. And, uh, okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, to show that this approximation is correct, it's uh, really not that hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you have a kind of universality in mm -hmm. uh, terms of uh, the noise. So, this, this should be a uh, problem. But, uh, and, and let's say you could uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's say you could study models where the noise is not Gaussian anymore, but more complicated. Uh, do you think we could capture more about the SBM because the, the mapping between uh, the SBM and uh, and uh, the spike linear model to universality, this Linda backwards point, all that is it's true uh, uh, asymptotically, and yeah. you you need. Okay, so, so uh, first, uh, I, I just realized that I did not mention that this approximation will be correct when d tends to infinity. Yes. Otherwise, uh, when the, yes. the degree, so I guess. Uh, Do you think you can capture like uh, other scalings if, if, if you could study more complicated version of the spike linear model with a non Gaussian noise and things like this? Uh, so, uh, so far, that's not what we did. I mean, for sparse, in the sparse regime for uh, stochastic block model, uh, I don't know, but I, I, my feeling was that uh, result in a random matrix, so there are results in random matrix theory in the sparse regime too, mm -hmm. uh, but they are not uh, powerful enough to uh, attack the problem and looking at the local structure on and other, uh, I mean, we are not using we are not using at all this uh, this uh, machinery of uh, statistical physics uh, stuff. Uh, so, uh, which is uh, which? I mean, so basically, what we are doing is uh, we try to derive a smart algorithm, uh, smart in the sense that we hope they are uh, optimal. So you can show one bond uh, in this. Uh, so you can say, okay, the, in this regime it's possible, but uh, it's uh, it would be very nice to have uh, a picture like that in uh, in the sparse regime. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not aware of any result, uh, even showing that there is a hard phase uh, uh, for the stochastic uh, block model uh, with well, in the new, sparse regime. Yes. No, no, there is, there is. You need more communities, but there is. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, no, no, yeah. that's that's correct. Uh, yeah. But okay, we don't have the we we don't know uh, what this line is. This is what uh, I I mean. We, we don't, don't we don't have uh, information theoretic uh, formula uh, except for a very particular points. So for the symmetric case. Yeah. Uh, when you are adding communities and then uh, you, you can show, but there is I mean, not such a, yeah. a, a picture like that. Okay, okay. Perfect. So thank you then. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs>